South Africa and what a wonderful, wonderful Monday we're having. My name is Jeannie Dean. And I'm Bonnie Bully. Welcome indeed. Hope you had a great weekend. And now the reason why today is so amazing is because I didn't have a chance to Monday because <laughs> this morning started off with the incredible Wade Funny Cack, not just bashing a gold, like, like taking a gold medal yeah. and completely obliterating the uh, world record. But the but fact he that the he underdog. did it. Yeah, he did it from lane eight, now, and which means they've got kind of got like a long day longer distance and to run. nobody's won from that lane, apparently. Exactly. And did you see how far ahead he was? And then my favourite, my absolute highlight <laughs> of it, was Usain Bolt's reaction to him winning. I mean, I was like, oh, I, I got goosebumps because that is what sportsmanship is about. It was absolutely beautiful. That's absolutely anyway, amazing. today on the show we are discussing inequality and we've got two amazing women here today mm -hmm. and uh, they're from the Institute of Justice and Inequality. And also we ask you the question on social media today, what should every man do to improve gender equality in this country? Tweet us using the hashtag Afternoon Express at Afternoon Chat or call us on 0839133728. Now there's less than two weeks left before we announce the winner of Winner Home on Afternoon oh my, Express on the 26th. And this week we'll be focusing on the design contestants journeys and today we're specifically focusing on Minentle and his uh, mentor Val Bellingham. Now speaking about inequality, this weekend there was absolutely no equality in your life because you were absolutely no equality. killing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I went go-kart racing with yeah. a couple of uh, celebrities mm. and Maps and I mm. collided in go-karts. Uh, listen, and go -kart I would love to collide with Maps. On my leg. <laughs> <laughs> but in a different way, obviously. So I'm actually limping, but uh, shame, he felt so bad. He's been SMSing me all day asking how I am. But yeah, that was my weekend. How was yours? Oh, absolutely amazing. But good to be back. Let's head over to the kitchen to see what Danila's up to. Indeed, good afternoon ladies and good afternoon South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. So it seems like it's been a festive weekend. Obviously this morning, first of all, the ladies were saying they had a really busy weekend, but also it seems like Wade Fanikak had a great day today. And all sportsmen and people who had crazy weekends all want a really delicious meal. And so that's what we're cooking on the show today. I'm joined by a guest chef who hasn't been in our loft just yet, Karima Isaacs. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you for having me. So this lady over here is phenomenal. She just released her cookbook. It's called My Cape Malay Kitchen. And today she's making us something Cape Malay and it's something that I actually have been dying to make myself, especially in the winter season. What are we making? We are doing a mutton curry and we are using ground spices. Ah, so not, not one the of those mm. out the box uh, sort of curry powders, okay. <laughs> That's exactly what we're doing. So we are doing, uh, we've got our lamb here, we've got the spices here. Yummy. Um, all of the ingredients and we'll move over to the pot when you're ready. Yummy, I'm looking forward to cooking along with you. Don't forget to get all the recipes on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. It's the first time, in fact, that I'm ever going to be making myself one of these mutton curries before, so I'm really, really <laughs> much looking forward to that. On the show today, we're also joined by a very special guest uh, in the loft today. Um, she is a chef that I've always wanted to cook with and I've never got a chance to because yesterday, I find out that she's more famous than I am. <laughs> Bussy Siwe, how are you? Fine, thank you, Nick. I'm doing very, very well, thank you. Bussy Siwe is 17 years old. She's got her own cooking show, and she's here today to show us how uh, what some of her favorite dishes are. And she, her biggest dream in the whole world is to cook alongside Jenny Morris, and you're also with us in the loft today. Good to have you, Mama. It's good for Mama to be here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you making for us? Uh, we're going to do a frittata. I thought it was something sweet, but then Boo doesn't like sweet things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're turning to something slightly more savory, which looks absolutely yes. delicious. If you guys want to get that recipe as well, it's on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, I know the topic for the day is all about equal equality, and I'm seeing Jenny Morris, I'm seeing Bushy Siwa, I'm seeing Karima, and two other ladies in the loft, and I'm the only guy, right? That's because it's a women's show, Danila. <laughs> <laughs> now, inequality is a pertinent issue all over the world and especially in South Africa. With August being Women's Month, gender inequality is at the forefront. With us to discuss this, social, this is social activist Pumeza Mlongwana and currently the General Secretary of the Social Justice Coalition and change agent Ayanda Nyoka and project leader of the Inclusive, Eco uh, e Inclusive Economies Project at the IJ, as well as director of the Women's Legal Centre in Cape Town, Siham Samai. Welcome, ladies, welcome and welcome ladies. back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So how far is South, Africa's, in, uh, South Africa in achieving our, our goals in women equality and justice and gender equality? Um, 
This is quite an interesting and I think also a very pertinent question as we are commemorating 60th, uh, 60 years since the women in South Africa marched uh, for their own rights. Uh, interestingly enough, we released a report just um, this year around March it's called the Transformation Audit. We release it annually at the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation. And one of the key themes that we looked at in the report was the issue of women's vulnerability in the labor market. Um, trying to get a sense of how, how do women fare in terms of, you know, in terms of salaries in the labor market, but mm -hmm. also in terms of, in comparison to men, obviously, but also in terms of employment. Um, I think one of the key things that we still find, surprisingly enough, in 2015, as much as, you know, our government since the end of apartheid has been championing the issue of women's empowerment but we still we still do find now today that women you know um, when we look at unemployment trends they, they you know very much affected um, by by unemployment in comparison to men so a whole lot of women still remain outside the labor market interestingly at the same time in the 90s we've seen women being pushed to join the labor force for a number of reasons because globally there's also been this drive about you know, women's emancipation, women having to, you know, define themselves outside the traditional role of being in the kitchen. So we've seen women aspiring and wanting to define themselves in new ways and also being very ambitious. But interestingly, as women flock into the labor market, at the same time, we're finding that women still face very, um, I think on the one hand, visible barriers and also very much invisible barriers, which I think on the one hand has to do with, with, with the patriarchy mm. that, that, that's Give us yeah. an example Absolutely. of that. Like, yeah. break that down for us. What are some of the, the vis visible challenges and what are some of the invisible ones? Just to break it down for us. Okay, just in terms of the visible <coughs> ones, we know that unemployment affects mostly women in comparison to men. Yeah. Secondly, if we look at women when they are in the labour market, we find that a whole lot of women, they are in insecure jobs. So, mm -hmm. you ideally, you want to be in the formal sector where you have benefits, where you have security. But a whole lot of women Women are in this precarious work environments so yeah. a lot of them are outside they're in the informal mm -hmm. sector and but also what we do find benefits such as um, you know your maternity leave think about a domestic worker for example yeah. you know uh, when she gets pregnant does she actually have you know uh, maternity leave or, or um, you know, the fact that she gets pregnant and has to take maternity leave, does it mean that she loses her job? We know that some women actually have to work up until the very last minute, right? Maybe mm -hmm. the last week or so, <clears throat> you know, be, be, whereas if you are in the, the formal sector, you have the, the benefit of actually having a four yeah. month, six months maternity yeah. leave. Yeah. So those visible barriers where women don't have benefits such as maternity, they're in the insecure uh, um, informal sector. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think for me, those were some of the key sort of issues that came out of the report. But also within the, uh, the formal sector, we see women are not really rising up to, to you know, to, to those positions of power. Very much we're still seeing that glass ceiling uh, phenomenon that we talk yeah. about it about, about um, across the world, I think. Yeah. What are some of the social issues surrounding this that are prohibiting this? I mean, just off the top of my head, violence against women. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, let me just come in here, and I think maybe we need to be mm. also be able to put it in context that post-1994, mm. um, we, we have a constitutional dispensation where we have a huge amount of laws which, actually, which has been brought in to protect mm. women. Yeah. We've got Labour Relations Act, impressive. we've got employment. Yeah. But equity, on paper, it's, it's on nice. paper. Is it so, being enforced? Yes. Now, the challenge mm. that we have is to be able to ensure that those rights are not paper rights. And yeah. how mm. is it that women will be able to access those particular rights. Now, if we speak about domestic workers, for example, then we must also speak about our rural women, mm. farm workers, Precisely. seasonal workers. Sure. And I think before we can even speak to the formal laws, where we have laws that protect farm workers, but what about patriarchy within those farms or within that labour structure? Mm. Farm worker women never had rights separate from their husbands. Wow. And only recently, um, which is one of the cases that the Women Legal Centre did, which was, was the class matter, where the Constitutional Court actually recognised that women on farms who are working there, even though their husbands are either being evicted or they are being fired um, from their work, it's not tied to them. So, I, I mean, we're talking about 20 years later. 
Mm -hmm. Whereas those women are the ones that are mo the most vulnerable, the ones which are in the informal sector, farm workers, domestic workers, and I would even go as far as sex workers. The mm -hmm. challenge that we're sitting with is gender-based violence impact also these women within the sector in a most profound way. Wow. Because you have women that are impacted by discrimination on different levels, race, we've got class, We've got religion, we've got culture, we've got sexual orientation, because right. we also have women, LGBTI, the LGBTI sector, exactly. who was impacted um, around gender-based violence. Right. And these are all yeah. challenges that we need to be able to look at. And what are the barriers? Yeah. The barriers are sexual harassment still in the workplace. Mm. We are talking about patriarchal uh, cultural as well as religious practices, like Ukutwala. Yes, yeah. absolutely. That Crazy. we need to, and that is where the courts, where the Women yeah. Legal Centre yeah. has also looked at, um, came in as a friend of the court around that particular yeah. case, where, the, where, where it was said that the forced marriage in relation to Ukutwala, or it's a form of forced marriage. Yeah, Ukutwala is a form of, you, yes. you get kidnapped and then you're forced to marry someone and your family never sees you again. Yeah. So what we're sitting with is that we've got a, a tron we've got a constitution, a sound constitution. We've got legislation, but the challenge is that how does it move down to the communities? Mm. How does it move into those formalized structures, yeah. both government, as well as institutions, um, whether or not it's institutions, religious institutions, yeah. we're talking about um, sport institutions, exactly. cultural institutions. Yeah. How does it impact How women's does it lives impact at a grassroots on level? A, because that is the challenge, is that the constitution, black women in particular, mm. have mm. not seen the change mm. Yeah. Um, in their daily lives right. yeah. of what the constitution have brought. And Pumeza, that's yeah. where your organisation yeah. exactly. comes in, Exactly, right? and I think it's interesting that we are talking about the constitution this year, I think at the end in December, we're celebrating 20 years of the same constitution. And the yeah. question is, have we seen a difference in people's lives? And again, when we talk about inequality, we cannot take race out of this discussion. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, there's racial inequality. If you look at, for example, in the province which I work in, which is the city of Cape Town, Geography, just when you look at geography and how people are placed, there is inequality on its own. When you look at the services that people have in Kailicha, you know, where women and men have to use an open field to relieve themselves, women are always at the brunt of feeling that inequality. When you look at women which have to take care of the elderly, the disabled, and it's women who take care of the children who don't. There are no work opportunities, but they also don't have the chance to even go and get that work opportunity. And so when we talk about inequality, we need to look at, <coughs> we have the right policies in place, like you say, yeah. but again, in 2016, yeah. we still see how reluctant our government is to really put the right structures yeah. in place to ensure that there's, the inequality is yeah. limited. Yeah. And yeah. just money, just when you look at something as simple as money, and when you talk mm. about gender-based violence, Statistics, statistics of rape are reported every day. A girl is raped. Yeah. Bonnie girl... and I were discussing this before the yeah. show we, because where do you start to fix everything? Because there's so many little things mm -hmm. that are wrong that where do you start putting the wheels in motion for it to all start working? Yeah. The first and even thing... if you put the legal framework in place, how many women, women can access mm -hmm. and, yeah. and go to it? I mean, I had to go to a police station the other day to <coughs> just ask for an affidavit. Mm -hmm. About three cops ended up making a big fat mm -hmm. joke about me because I had to say, where I work and how much I earn, and they, they just thought it was time to ridicule me and saying stuff like, oh, do you know that I've never earned that kind of money in my life? What are you gonna do about that, would you? And it was this like humiliating uh, moment for me, and I kept thinking to myself, what if I'd been raped mm. and I was here to report a rape? To the very what? people yeah. that you yeah. meant to feel protected by. Exactly. Yeah. Let me tell you, I think mm. in earlier this year, there was a rape, which is like the perfect example of what you're talking mm. about. There's a rape of a girl in Tukai, there's a rape of a girl and a murder of a girl in Kailicha. Yeah. And how those two cases were treated differently by the police yeah. is insane. It's actually sickening when you think about it, that so many resources were put in finding the, the people who kidnapped the girl in Tukai. Not that the girl in Tukai is not important, yes, but can't we treat it, yeah. the person, the black child in Kailicha with the same amount of dignity, oh. where we 
deploy the right resources, where we deploy the right detective. Because a lot of the cases that I get thrown out of court of gender-based violence, it's because even taking a statement was not done properly. Okay, but now I want to know, is that a race thing or is that a financial thing? It's a, it's a bit of uh, everything. One, yeah. if you look at race in Cape Town or yeah. the South African mm. police service on its own, and this is the work we've done when you look at safety, is that our police service is still allocating resources the same way the apartheid government used to. So in Kim's wow. Bay, for example, there's been 10 murders over 10 years. That's just looking at the numbers of murder. Mm -hmm. And in Kailicha and areas like Nyanga and Manenberg, there's over 300 murders reported every year. Sexual offences, gender-based violence is high. And we know a lot of sexual offences are not reported yeah. because people know I'm going to report and the perpetrator is going to be out to attack me yeah. at the end. And we've looked at the numbers of how police to population is allocated. And Kim's Bay is getting nine times more resources than an area like a college. But, yeah. you know, in, in that wow. our legal, uh, in our gender list, I think South Africa was number four on the list in 2012. And now because, that, because so many crimes haven't been, um, you know, sorted out for these women, we now, yeah. it's like a 96 on the list, because women don't feel safe living in our country. So and if something regressing. happens to you, the law isn't going to protect yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the challenges, like... <coughs> you know, is that we have all these courts also. We've got the maintenance court, domestic violence court, children's we've court. got children's courts, we've got now the mm -hmm. sexual offences courts, um, and it's all being rolled out. But w there's something within mm -hmm. the institution so. that is causing also um, gender discrimination that mm -hmm. is that is causing that women are not reporting. And the most important thing is that cases are withdrawn yeah. Wow. Or yeah. the the cases are not finalised, and it's withdrawn over a range of things, which yeah. is that witnesses don't come. There is secondary victimisation yeah. of rape um, victims, rape survivors, and those are all things that the courts are supposed to look at. The, for example, in the sexual offences courts, there was a ministerial task team that looked at how those courts are supposed to be structured. And we're talking about you have intermediaries, you've got magistrates and you've got... But even within that system, something is not happening. Which means that it's it, the system needs to work like a puzzle. But at the moment, I but think the not, problem is that a lot of the systems that are put into place aren't functioning and systems need to then change. Yes. Shame. We've, we've mm -hmm. unfortunately yeah. run out of time. We do carry on the conversation on social media. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express. Let's head over to Dan in the kitchen. Shame, sorry. Indeed, coming up after the break right here on Afternoon Express, we're going to be making something super delicious and I'm so honoured to be cooking along with two incredible people. If you've always thought that Indian curry and Cape Malay curry were the same thing, you're about to be taught a lesson. We're making a delicious mutton curry all the way from the Boer Cup. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, something else that is back is Tropica Island of Treasure. Are you ready to join South Africa's hottest celebrities in the Seychelles and become a TV star? Well, host Mini Dlamini and Games Master Jonathan Boynton Lee want you to be a part of the seven smooth teams led by seven celebrities that will compete on the tropical island of the Seychelles. Each team will strive to outdo the others to stand a chance of winning the one million rand grand prize. It's massive. Which team would you choose? All you have to do is purchase a Tropica and follow the instructions on pack. Visit tropica.co.za for more of those details. Right, it's time for us now to get cooking on Afternoon Express. And I'm joined by Karima Isaacs, who's just uh, finally released her cookbook called My Cape Malay Kitchen. And today we're going to be finding out about the difference between Cape Malay curry and Indian curry. Break the news. <laughs> I think Indian curries have more heat uh, okay. than Cape Malay curries. Our curries tend to be slightly sweeter because mm -hmm. um, there's an, the addition of uh, sugar just to balance out the acidity from the tomatoes that we add. Mm. But it's definitely not as hot as Indian curries. We also don't use um, chili powder in uh -huh. our curries. So it's either a leaf masala or a roasted masala like this one, Dan. Mm -hmm. um, and what, one of my favorite things about Cape Malay curries is that it's a lot saucier. Just it my is. best thing in the it world. It is, and that is because we actually add quite a bit of tomatoes, as okay. you would see here. Well, I'm yeah. excited to cook along with you. Show me how you do it Shall at home. Shall we cook? Mm. Okay. So let's do the spices first. Okay. So we'll do turmeric. Uh, we'll do some jeera. Oh. And so it's turmeric, jeera, and what else have you got? There? What's um, the third I've got one? a little bit of... Um, this is just roasted masala. Oh, yummy. You could also okay. use a leaf masala. And this is cumin, ground cumin. Cool. In, in workup, we would say jira. Ground, okay. ground jira. <laughs> ground, ground jira. 
that's it. You're getting that right, Pedro R. The... It's coming out beautifully. It's interesting because my grandfather came from Ethiopia and they have an injera, which is that like the big pan, the pan oh. uh, sort of like a dough that they've got, which is very, very sour. It's almost bubbly. So I know where to get the jeera from. <laughs> okay. Okay. Excellent. So we'll just stir that through slightly, just warm the spices. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can get that. Mm, the aroma is already starting to come through. It's delicious. Mm. Okay. And Perfect. I love that you're not using your own curry powder, that you're doing it from scratch. <laughs> Excellent. So we're going to just add the meat. I might you? need your I'll help here. Okay. Perfect. Cool. So we'll just add the meat to that. Oh, Whoops. come around. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to steal this piece of coriander back because I want my coriander. <laughs> okay. There I. Go. Oops. Gotcha. I'm just going to add some cinnamon and cardamom as well. And we'll just stir that through. Okay, so you try and get all of your ground ingredients Absolutely. there at the beginning so it can really infuse into that meat. So Absolutely. It's, all those flavors really soak in. Absolutely. And don't, I mean, don't be alarmed that the pot is slightly dry because the meat is really going to cook down. So you'll still okay. have a bit of moisture in the pot. Yeah. But what I often do is just to assist uh, that process, just a squeeze of lemon. Okay. So you're again you cooking that, that acidity that's down. That's the magic you want. Okay. Okay. Delicious. So we'll give that a stir. Mm. So, you've got all your ingredients down there at the bottom. Those are going to infuse into the meat. That's going to cook for a long time to really yeah. get those flavors in there, soften the meat off the bone, and then what's next? Exactly. So, what you want to add next is just a little bit of water, and I would say about a half a cup of water. Let's just okay. add that. Um, and we'll allow that to cook for maybe about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, cool. So, it's not crazy long. That's no, no, a, that's it's a not. good time. It's, it really isn't. What we do next is, and this is, I'm sure my grandmother would cringe if she sees me doing this, <laughs> but in the good old days, we used to grate the tomato and okay. then add it to the pot. Um, now, obviously, <laughs> we've we got a blitzer. Uh... Splits very quickly, stop that, and. Mm. And what tomatoes have you used? Actual whole tomatoes yes. in there. So, oh, okay. what, I, what I've done is we've got uh, a can of um, just uh, a can tin of uh, tomatoes. Like a whole peeled tomato exactly. in a can, okay. And then You've got some, this is a grated uh, fresh tomato. Okay. Uh, it just seems to balance out quite nicely and I like the, the flavor of it. Yeah, sure. So we add that. Because bear pot. in mind, obviously the canned tomatoes have been sitting in a can for a long enough period of time. It does have a slightly more acidic flavor yeah. to it and will, <gasps> or slightly more acidic. Oh, there goes all the tomato. Oh. <laughs> don't worry, I'll get you a little cloth there. Where do I find one? Oh my gosh. We have one somewhere, but don't worry about it. It's cool. Because what we'll do is we've kind of got a, a finished sort of product here, right? Okay. And you can Live just talk TV. us through the rest. Yeah. Live TV, okay. Um, so let me do this. Cool. I want to try and get a cloth for you if we can Please. get a cloth. It would be great. I don't know where to find one. Anyway, but this one's going to have to be moved here so we can all see it. I'll do this for you. Hoppla. I'll move this one here. And the joys of live TV. Ta-da! Okay. A finished product. Got my cloth. There I you am go. pretty sure everyone in Boer Cup is sitting at home thinking <laughs> you and have she grated it. is not doing justice to the Boer Cup curry. No, okay. they say you so, should have grated it. If you did grate it, it wouldn't have come out looking like this. So your grandmother knows and she's turned in her grave. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that aside, what would have happened was we put the, the tomatoes into the, well, uh, added to the meat. Okay, cool. Um, and then... You basically would end up with your saucy curry like this okay. after about 20 minutes or so. And the potatoes would then go into that potatoes too? Potatoes go, go into that and um, then just towards the end I usually just add uh, some chopped coriander. Okay. And if you like, you can actually top it up with a little bit more uh, turmeric if mm. you find that the curry seems to be, you know, looks a little bit like a stew. Okay. Because you really want that pop of colour. You can also yes. add a little bit of uh, saffron as well, which we, Delicious. we often do as well. And then the coriander is going to go on the top to sort of just cool down all those sort of flavours, give it a nice sort of fresh touch to it. Absolutely. So even though your tomato didn't manage to make it to the pot, it looks delicious and I promise you <laughs> it will taste as delicious. We'll tell you how it tastes a little bit later on right here on Afternoon Express. Don't forget to get the recipe from our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, especially if you're looking to make something for this winter's afternoon. It should be absolutely delicious. Now, after the break, we've got a very special surprise. A young aspiring chef, Busi Siwe Mabedla, will be joining us on the couch. You may have caught her yesterday on Weekend Edition. She's here to share her inspiring story, so stay right where you are.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Thank you for joining us. Today we have a very special guest on our show. Her name is Busi Mapedla and she's an aspiring young chef. At the age of 16, she has already started her very own YouTube cooking channel called Best of Busi, where you can see her cooking recipes and review her favorite foods. Her dream was to have the chance to cook along with TV chef Jenny Morris, which she got the chance to do yesterday on the weekend edition. Check this out. I'll be talking about restaurant reviews of the places that I've Can't been. Can't we see? Um... <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to Afternoon Express. Now, we saw you this weekend on the morning audition. How was that experience for you? Very nice, thank you. And after watching it, we thought we have to, we absolutely have to have you on the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um... What do you want to know? <laughs> wow. What do you love most about being Busi? Well, I like... Be, re, I like to cook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you started Have you got a, a bit of stage channel? fright? Because I saw you on that YouTube channel and you are... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to start the YouTube channel? I wanted to be famous. Oh, yeah? How's that working out for you? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I believe so. Okay, so tell us about your journey on how you were able to get from having your YouTube posts to then being able to cook with Jenny Morris on the weekend show. I reached for a dream, met me at Red Cross Hospital. And yeah. they gave me my dream. And how did you ask for it? They just came to me and asked who was my favourite celebrity chef. Yeah. And you said Jenny Morris. Why is yeah. Jenny Morris your favourite celebrity chef? Because she's like got the same personality as me. Yeah? <laughs> what, what do you think your personality is about? Um, Vibey, vivacious, yes. fun. I like to be out there. Pizzazz. You like to be out there. <laughs> you also have a dog which you like to include in your YouTube clips yes, as well. Rachel. Tell us about your dog, Rachel. Rachel is a miniature... No, she's not. She's a, she's a strange type of dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As most dogs are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she's a Dachshund, a wire-haired Dachshund. Oh, so wow. Very, um... We actually have a clip of her. Yeah. 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 Do you want to see it? Yes. Okay. I want to see. Today I'll be talking about restaurant reviews of the places that I've been at, so calamari and sushi, guest starring Rachel. She is a miniature doctor. Isn't she adorable? You have to go to her harness to get good food. Oh, 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 Cape Town. Mr. Fish. A good one is your rover, Rachel. Your Rachel! Your rover. Which is, um, it used to be amazing. But now not as good. Because they used to have amazing calamari. And what? Rachel had a meeting. They went from tubes to rings. That's just bad. That's unthinkable. Tubes to rings. Fortunately, I've got some rice in, in the kitchen ready to make proper sushi. And at Rachel's back from her appointment. Um, yes, what, what do you have to say? Yes, yes. See, yes. Yes, Rachel. Oh, Rachel is adorable. She's yeah. adorable. It's your birthday soon, right? Yeah. How old are you turning? 17. 17. Yeah. And you're so lucky. You've got two moms. Yeah. You told us you're a very blessed girl. Tell mm. us about your two moms. How come do you have two moms? Because I got adopted when I was three. Mm. Two and a half. No, three. Three. Mm -hmm. How did you meet your second mom? Uh, in hospital. What was going on? I was sick in hospital. Yeah. <laughs> and she was volunteering. <laughs> Okay, yeah. and you guys just, it was love at first sight. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So now cooking is your, your, your passion and travelling as well. If you could put all of that together and say, where would your favourite destination be and what would be your favourite dish to eat? Hmm. Japan, because I like sushi. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Japan's yeah. quite a phenomenal place. So do you have any more dreams on your bucket list that you still want to fulfil? I want to become a sushi chef. Do you? Yes. Okay. Okay, and, and how are you going to go about doing that? Because I think you look like a girl with a plan. Well, at the moment I'm going for YouTube. Yeah. Because yeah. it's yeah. a seven year process. How come it's a seven year process? How many hits have you got at the moment or how many viewers? I'm not sure how many viewers, but my 
one video got 39 views and I checked that yesterday. Oh, that's amazing. Nice. So your channel is called? Best of Bussy. Best of, Best Bussy. of Bussy. So basically everybody has to go online immediately and go and check out uh, Best of Bussy's um, uh, YouTube channel. And of course, subscribe and like and follow. And then we can see all of your cooking, amazing delicious dish <laughs> updates. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have a very special gift for Bussy today, along with which she can enjoy along with her two very special moms. The Western Hotel in Cape Town would like to invite all three ladies for a luxury treatment of their choice at the Heavenly Spa, which could include a facial, a massage, a manicure or a pedicure, as well as two delicious courses from the menu at 019 Restaurant. Ta-da! Wow. So you and your two mums are going so to have much. a fabulous girly pamper day. Yeah. That's exciting. So do you know what you're going to have yet? Manicure, pedicure, massage, facial, what do you, what do you think you're going to go for? The manicure. Yeah, because oh, your, your nail goodness. polish matches your whole outfit, girl. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for coming through <laughs> onto the show. I think we're going to see you a little bit later, though. Right now, let's have a look and see where Danilo is in the garden. Indeed, celebrating all the greenery, but I, uh, she looks very uh, comfortable on that couch, and I'm pretty nervous to cook alongside with her. She's got some real skills uh, in that kitchen, so I'm looking forward to cooking along with Bussy Siwe later on right here on Afternoon Express. After the break on the show, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, and today we have the lady whose favorite phrase was Minetle and Minetle joining us in the loft. Don't go anywhere. With a home on Afternoon Express where you, the viewer, can win one of three luxury apartments at Valdivia Estate in the Cape Winelands worth over three million rand. Designed by our three contestants using finishes provided by Caesarstone and Plascon. Welcome back. Now, in less than two weeks, on the 26th of August, we will be announcing the winner of Win a Home live on Afternoon Express. Now, this week, we are looking back on each of our design contestants' journeys. And today, we focus on Minentle and his mentor, Bell, editor of Elle Decoration, a journey that definitely got off to a rocky start. Durbanite candidate architect Minentle Tuli was handpicked by his mentor, Bell Bellingham, from El Decoration magazine. So this is like the main feature on my bedroom, um, of which went wrong earlier. So the problem was the mirrors were too big for the doors. His guest bedroom didn't win the judges vote this round, but with four more rooms to go, he had plenty of time to catch up. Next up was the bathroom. What's our wow factor? How are we going to set ourselves apart? Also, I have this idea of having a mosaic feature wall. For the mirrors, I want to do something different whereby I take up this concept of the frame which I get from the guest bedroom. You remember, if you're relying on other people, you have to give them enough time. The final day for the bottoms, and I'm nowhere. If you asked me last week if I'd be here, I wouldn't have said I'd be at this stage. This is not where I thought it was going to be at this stage. I thought I was coming in for final touches. My biggest worry from the beginning was the tiling, so I've been trying to push that to be done, but that's the thing that's been holding us back, because even the bath can't go in because we still need to wait for the tiling to, to be finished. I can't waste my time coming through, driving through for nothing. I honestly can't. Okay. So where's through from here? I mean, what do we do now? Are we going to miss our deadline? Um, we're just going to hope that the viewers love you. <laughs> I am devastated. I honestly am. It's very worrying. I must be honest about that. Oh, wow. Minentle? What's going on here? Ah, uh, man. You were very positive about Bell in the beginning of this competition. You guys recently have changed your relationship slightly. What happened? I've disappointed her and myself, but I'm hoping I can pull up my socks in the coming challenges. Minentle did indeed pull up his socks and an extra day of hard work resulted in an inspired bathroom design. So tell me about the mural, that's what I'm most excited about. Have we, we got in touch with Nabia, you're going ahead with that? Yes, yes, Nabs is on site uh, working on the mural. The importance of this bedroom, it's stylish, but it's functional. What have you got planned for this master bedroom? So I'm still going for those very earthy colours. I'm definitely going bolder with the, just to make a statement behind the bed because I feel like I played it too safe with the guest bedroom, just using one colour. I'm very pleased my bed is in, all the way from Durban. I thought I'd, um, I'd just bring some blessings from my hometown, 
Overall, I'm quite happy with the progress. Um, I feel like I'm on track compared to the bathroom, to be specific. Minentle was more than just on track. His master bedroom was a masterpiece and cinched his first win on Winner Home. He aimed to do it again on the next challenge, the kitchen. You've got your structure, um, your, your exquisite skeleton, so now you can kind of play a bit. I think you're on your way. So overall, what's left is for the cupboards to come in and then the scissor stone tops can come in afterwards. Minen Flair pulled it off in style and created a contemporary kitchen that won the judges over. The final room would bring the whole home together. No time for lounging about. I'm looking to define the lounge as a space on its own, so I'm looking for a rug that's going to stand out and be very bold. Ooh. <laughs> what is the wow factor in the lounge? What I'm really excited about is the, my collaborations, the coffee table, and especially the dining table, which I call a four to six table, simply because it comes in as a four seater, then it expands to a six seater. Looks like things are slowly but surely being put into place here. How's it going? It's not going as planned. So my car was stolen last night. Oh. So yeah, it hasn't been easy for me to, to move around. There's a lot of stuff was in the car. Some of it affected my progress, but... Um, with the whole home complete, Minente and Bell from Team L Decoration wait for the final verdict from the judges. With two wins under his belt, Minente has his eye on the prize of 50,000 Rand and that coveted Arc Design Studio internship. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the loft, Minente and his mentor, Bell. Guys, welcome. It's so good to have both of you with us. Bell, what an interesting journey it has been. I want to find out from you about this whole journey and your relationship together, because I've made jokes about it often. Yeah. Um, but it's been a really good process. You guys have grown a lot in, in the way that you've sort of moved forward in this journey. So, Minente, first of all, moving from Durban to Cape Town, was it tough for you uh, sort of changing your dynamics to the Cape Town way of living? Uh, definitely, um, especially since the last time I was in Cape Town, I was very much in the CBD and the site is very far from the CBD, so it was my first time being out of the CBD. So moving around was a bit challenging, but you always have the GPS to move around. And maybe it's going to work in your favour to have all the Durbanites sort of surround themselves around you to like represent Durban, which will be very, very exciting to see. When you saw his work, Bell, yes. what made you choose me Nentla over the rest? I've mentioned it before. I think my big thing is I always stalk people on social media. It's the way I hire <laughs> yeah. anyone. Um, it is. You really get like a voyeuristic understanding of how they curate things. And Minentle's, all of his social media feeds were impeccably curated. Good. You could really see that he had attention to detail. He edited them. Um, so I think that part of meeting, you can, you can teach all manner of things. You learn mm. in your career, you can learn things, but you can't teach that kind of fastidious attention to detail. Yeah, it's so funny to see because, I mean, everyone says, oh, social media doesn't play a big part in the job world. Well, look, clearly it does. Oh, that's crucial. Especially in the creative fields. Yeah. And your relationship, let's get straight into it because I think let's let's get that out of the way. It was really rocky in the beginning, especially with those first two challenges, and then slowly started to get better from there. What was causing this clash all the time? Do you know what? I think I was taking it on the chin. I, right at the beginning, I assumed that... I assumed that Benentle knew a lot more. We forget. I mean, I've been in the industry for a long time, 12, 12 years. <laughs> so it's, I, don't, I think it was, you know, you don't understand. You, know, you don't realize that you don't know how to get things out of people. Mm. Again, he's coming from a completely different city. He didn't know. I mean, I know off the back of my hand how to quickly do things. Mm. Um, so that was one of the things that I think was unfair of me. Um, and also, we just had to learn how to work together. Mm. I, I, like I've said it before, I... I like punctuality is an important thing for me, and <laughs> we had to get, we had to figure that one out together. We know um, that that's not his big point. No, we well, know that. Menendez is not great. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and again, it was just a rough start. We had a few setbacks, yeah. and, and I have to hand it to Menendez. He was incredibly positive the whole time. I yeah. lost my, you know, power, and he would just come back, cool, cool, cool as a cucumber. Yeah, I don't think he's ever changed that 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 mindset, <laughs> no. which has been so valuable to you because yeah. you remained strong-headed throughout the whole process. You knew what you wanted to do, and the creative was always there. It was just the practicality of getting it done. And then how did you think that your relationship improved from then onwards? Has it? Yeah, I think it definitely improved, especially from the master bedroom. Um, I got to understand the importance of like following up because mm -hmm. I feel like I had uh, I trusted people too too Wait. much. Aww. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was definitely a learning process for me, and uh, I definitely feel like I've grown a lot. 
Yeah, your girlfriend will be a very lucky woman knowing that you trust her anyway, besides <laughs> with, oh, you cheated on me last night. I don't know, but it's fine, I trust you, it's going to be okay. You've had a lot of setbacks in, in the process, like you mentioned. I mean, the, the timing of things was always a nightmare. But then on top of that, towards the last challenge, actually, in fact, the last challenge, your car was stolen in the process. And we've spoken a bit about the challenge of getting all the products to site. But what about you personally? How did that affect you? Um, I think the first thing that I did was speak to the family. Um, I was very worried that... that they'd be very worried about me, but mm -hmm. um, to my surprise, they were very composed, so that helped me a lot to focus back on the competition. Mm -hmm. And my team, uh, Bao was very, um, like, let's focus on the competition, uh, which really helped me a lot um, to have all these people around me supporting me, um, even though they felt sorry for me, but there was still, uh, there was still a job that needed we to be done. We didn't feel sorry for long, we just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got to get back to work. <laughs> And luckily, you managed to get your car recovered. So big thanks to the SAPS, which was amazing. And uh, it really has been a process for you getting this whole project put together. But you've done an incredible job. All your rooms have got so much foresight in them. And they are trendy beyond anything that I've seen before. So are you obviously going for that cover to title? And what do you think is going to make you win over the other two contestants? Um, definitely, um, I want the title. And um, what I think is going to have me clinch the title is that the, the, the space is designed specifically for Valdivie. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a good design is determined by uh, being informed by, what, by its surroundings. So um, the space makes sense because it's in Valdivie. Like if you were to take the rooms and put them somewhere else, they wouldn't work as yeah. well. So what, what we designed was informed by, by um, the, the context. What you've done at Val de Well, yeah. both of you, good luck for the rest of this competition. You both are amazing people. I mean, actually, your designs have been incredible. It's now over to the judges. Good luck. And, Bell, did that stress level come down? <laughs> No more, me Nantle, oh, as he no. goes. <laughs> if you guys love me Nantle's bold African-inspired design, then don't forget to vote for him on privateproperty.co.za. You have only until this Friday, the 19th of August, to cast your vote and be entered into the draw for one of the biggest prizes on South African TV. So go and do it right now. We'll be right back after this. Vote now and you could win a home. One lucky viewer can win one of three completed apartments at the Valdeby Estate, valued at over 3 million rand by voting for your favorite design contestant's apartment on privateproperty.co.za. Win a home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now today we have a very special guest on our show. Her name is Busi Mabedla and she is an inspiring young chef with a YouTube channel who at three months old fell sick and it was discovered that she had a disorder of the immune system condition that affects infants and young children. The Weekend Edition team were contacted by Reach for a Dream and yesterday she had her dream come true of being able to cook with TV chef Jenny Morris. So welcome to our show Jenny and Busi. Thank, Thank you. I don't know if I'm excited or nervous to cook alongside you because you both look very good in this kitchen and Listen, I, I pretend. We do well together, don't we? Yeah. You'll fit in. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So well, today we're making a frittata, which roughly translated in Italian means fried. It's basically like a crushed quiche or, or like a... It's like a, a, almost omelet. like a crustless... Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a very gorgeous Italian omelet. It's a sexy one. It's like me. Yes. Oh, omelet, what can I say? Gorgeous Italian. Me, 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 me. <laughs> we can try. Say wishful thinking, <laughs> Bussi. <Yeah. laughs> what we're going to do here, Bussi, this is a mascarpone. Okay. Um, what you take it, Bus, and then we're going to put it into our egg and whisk it up nicely. You can use Ooh. fresh cream as well. I'll hold for you. Yes. Can, oh, you got it. There we go. Daniela, just... give me some of those um, caramelized onions, Delish. if you don't mind. I'll come around here there and scoop them in for you. Yep, scoop them in, and then mm. you can pass me the spinach. Sure. Now, what you can do is you can, obviously, you can go from raw, but I mean, we girls aren't silly. We're well prepped. <laughs> It's almost like you've wilted the spinach already. We've wilted it already, and we know that they want to eat, and they want to eat fast. Mm. Yeah. That's us men, yes. All that cheese, Bus, stick it in. Into her bowl? Yes, okay. into Bussy's bowl. Are you ready for it, Bussy? Yeah. Ta-da, there it goes. Thank you. Right, once Bussy has stirred that in beautifully, I'm mm -hmm. going to bring this, and she's going to, with attitude, do you remember, darling? Yeah. Huh? We What's the attitude you're going to do for us, Bussy? We're going to do it better than Fat Joe can. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Because that man knows how to serve attitude. He so. knows how to cook, too. <laughs> okay, Bus, in it goes. Ready? Are you ready? One, two, three, go! Wow, Yummy. look at that. 
all that delicious. Oh, I know Jeannie D will like this because she loves oh. protein. Yummy! Yes. This is oh, it is panting friendly, it looks like, right? There's Very no much so. Uh -huh. Now the secret here is to, um, if I can push Bussy a little bit along because Bussy she's... Bussy right. right! She's, she's got an elevator down here. <laughs> well, she's surfing, what do you mean? <laughs> okay, boss, what you're going to do is take this and push it away, okay? And then let the egg fall Ooh, to the side. Can... Okay, let's give up Bussy another push. One, One two, two, can we three, do it again? Go! He's very strong, this man, mm. isn't he? <laughs> it was leg day today. Well, you know, I've been working out. <laughs> it's got bad legs. Head, but it's... <laughs> How about those uh, red peppers? Sure. We all have all around them. All the way around, yes, because what happens is... You want them all in here, Jen? Um, not all. We'll just keep a little bit. One for me. I'm going for Bushy. Give Bushy one. Uh, yum, yum. Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs> we I'm like. also going to steal one. Okay, mm. once it starts setting around the side, we're going to pop it into the oven. Delicious. And let the oven do the rest of the work for Amazing. us. Amazing. But oh, we're well, clever. We've got one in the oven already. Ha ha! And ladies, also the curry's done and dusted, looking delicious. We've created a feast. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Happy eating. Well done, Bussy. Thank wow, you. That was quicker. Here's something I'm never <laughs> going to have marble dreams. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we chat to magazine editor and author Lerato Chabalala, whose latest book, The Way I See It, has created quite a stir on social media. And we chat to directors from the Black Filmmakers Festival. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel-good production.